we are live. Awesome. Uh, hello, uh, welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Fanshawe College's um, session where we're gonna talk about Fanshawe's and London's career advantage. My name is Saurabh Malhotra and I'll be your moderator for today. Before we start this session, I have a short Fanshawe video that I'd like to share with everyone. And as soon as the video is done, uh, we will start talking. Uh, Robert and I will turn off our video at this point. It's the buildings, old and new alike, and those yet to be built. It's the communities, established in one city then expanded across county lines and now international borders. It's the people, those who lead, those who support, in front of the classroom and behind the scenes. Those who engage and those who advocate, from down the street and across the globe. It's the impact, the kind we see, the kind we hear, the kind we feel. The impact of learning new skills, of inspiring passion. It's the impact of relationships One, two, three, and shared experiences. It's the relevancy as careers change and technology changes, as students change and classrooms change, as society changes. It's innovation through creativity and resiliency of spirit, through research and the efforts of many, opening doors of opportunity to future success. It's all of this and more. It's Fanshawe. Awesome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Saurabh Malhotra and I'm your moderator for this session, Fanshawe and London's Career Advantage. We have a very special guest with us here this morning here in London, Ontario. I'd like to introduce uh, my co-host for today, Robert Collins, who's the Director of Workforce Development at London Economic Development Corporation. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, and I'm so pleased to be able to join you and to talk about London's many different opportunities, some of our great features, and, and just that, that great opportunity to, to demonstrate we're such a welcoming city. Awesome, we are so pleased to have you, uh, Robert. And I know you all want to hear about the city of London, the amazing opportunities that uh, the city holds for all our future international students and hopefully future uh, Canadians. Um, I am gonna start by presenting uh, shortly about um, the opportunities that Fanshawe has and how Fanshawe helps you through your journey here in Canada. Um, so briefly, I'm going to cover a few topics that I think are really important for our students to know about, and then I'm going to turn it over to Robert. So first thing I think I'd like to talk about is the COVID-19. Uh, that's top of mind for everyone. Uh, as many of you would know, May 2020, Fanshawe had to move online um, because of the pandemic, like uh, many other colleges, uh, but we did it really, really well. We have tried to support our students through the whole process. Um, all the supports that students wanted have gone online as well. Um, another big thing that you need to be aware of that the application processing for September and winter 2021 has not been impacted. Fancho has put in support in place for our students, international and Canadian. Uh, there was a $1.5 million relief fund uh, for those in financial need. Uh, there has been, or last yesterday, there was another announcement about a $400,000 uh, fundraising that Fansha has been able to do to support those in financial need. Students who started summer intake, our May intake, were given a technology award uh, because we understood the reality has changed for many students. Instead of in-person, it's online that they have to do. Um, also, uh, we have uh, uh, introduced a need-based need -based bursary for our uh, students, Canadian and international students. But I think what has differentiated Canada from many other countries is how Canada, one, has followed medical advice. Um, uh, and I think that's, that's an amazing thing that Canada has done in terms of following that advice for uh, any pandemic efforts. 
but also how the Canadian government and immigration has responded fairly quickly and much better than many other uh, countries in terms of recognizing how uh, pandemic has changed the realities for international students. So the immigration uh, body uh, of Canada, IRCC, allowed me students to study up to 50% program online. Yesterday, they made an announcement about fall 2020 students as well. They are again allowing fall 2020 students to start online and do online till December 2020. And the online learning will not impact postgraduate work permit. Uh, those are amazing things that they came up with. But apart from that, the current students who are here in Canada already, if they were working before this, if they qualify, they could qualify for employment insurance or Canada emergency response benefit. Uh, there were, of course, qualifications required for that. But Canada is one of the very few countries who's even including international students into these kind of efforts. Um, so that has differentiated Canada's response um, in this pandemic. That's something I just wanted to quickly cover. Another part that I'm not talking about here, and then maybe Robert will talk about, is how our businesses in the city of London ha have adapted to COVID-19 and they've risen to this challenge um, and they have done everything possible uh, to support the community, the hospitals, the healthcare workers, the frontline uh, the front workers as well. I'm gonna to briefly touch upon Fanshawe and our uh, roots in the city. Uh, of course, you know, Fanshawe is um, one of the largest colleges in Ontario. Uh, Fanshawe opened up in 1967. We have 21,000 full-time students um, and 7,500, more than 7,500 of them are international students from more than 104 countries. We have students uh, and our partners from more than 100 countries joining us today for this YouTube live uh, session as well. Fanshawe is, um, th this is a map of the city of London, but also shows you where are Fanshawe's campuses located within the city of London. So you would see Fanshawe is everywhere in the city and uh, city supports Fanshawe. Fanshawe tries to support the city through this, um, th through everything. Um, our aviation center is located right at our London airport. Our Oxford Street campus and Z building, which is our largest campus, is, uh, is that is one of our largest campuses. London downtown campus has two buildings focusing on uh, hospitality, digital creative area as well. And our newest campus is the London South campus, which focuses on postgraduate programs uh, in business, healthcare, IT, all those fields. And of course, uh, we call our regional campuses small but mighty. Uh, these regional campuses pack a very heavy punch and international students have been very, very welcomed in these communities. Our Woodstock campus, Simcoe campus and St. Thomas campus have uh, welcomed international students. And we are hoping some of you are registered to go into one of our regional campuses as well. They offer more specialized and more um, in, in person uh, kind of facilities for students. The one thing that I do want to talk about in a little bit depth is how learning happens here at Fanshawe. Because what you get out of uh, your program here at Fanshawe depends on what you put into the program, what, what kind of efforts you put into the program. But Fanshawe supports you through this. But the learning that happens here at Fanshawe um, is a little different than what you might be accustomed to. So this is a quick two minute summary of how learning happens here at Fanshawe. One, almost all the learning is project-based. It's very applied. Of course, there is theory in many subjects, but our focus is on the applied component of it. How do you apply that knowledge to solve real world problems? That is what the focus is. As a result, the focus is not on this one big final exam. The focus is not just on that. Uh, Every class that you go to, uh, there is an assignment, uh, there is a weekly project, and then there might be a midterm project and there might be a final exam as well. But you have to learn every day and we are testing you on that learning almost every day, every week. That is very different than what some of our international students are accustomed to, wherein the examinations happen once a semester or twice a semester. Uh, there are big exams happening here as well but the learning happens every day and we try to test you 
at every point. Our professors are big differentiator here at Fanshawe. Our professors are industry professionals. They are people who worked in the industry. Some of them are still working in the industry. And most of all, they have connections in the industry. Uh, so that those professors can give you real industry knowledge, just not just a knowledge which is in a book, but real experiences, uh, real advice around how to navigate the industry in Canada. Program development, how Fanshawe launches a new program is, is impressive. Uh, we are a public college. There are multiple requirements that we have um, for uh, launching a new program as well. But one of the biggest requirements for launching a new program is a program advisory committee. Uh, so when we launch a new program, uh, we don't just decide of a program and just launch it. We, of course, come up with the content, uh, come up with our research and come up with the subject that we're gonna teach. But as a part of our approval process from the ministry, we have to take that content to our industry panel, which is our program advisory committee. Uh, that industry panel advises us on is, are those uh, subjects good? Uh, is that relevant? The technology we are teaching students, is it current? Or is there a new technology coming in that we can talk about? That is real advice from real professionals. Um, we take that advice, include that in our program, and only then can our program be approved. That is the reason Fanshawe has these awesome employment rates that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Another key thing is the student peers that you'll have. You will learn from professors, but you will also learn from your peers, from your classmates, from your schoolmates. Um, students come to Fanshawe from all across the world. Um, of course, uh, everyone who comes to Fanshawe uh, for a post-secondary program speaks English, but they have, almost all of our students have a second language. Uh, they have industry experience, they have life experiences. So you learn not just from the professors, uh, you also learn from your peers. And that is an important part of your learning that happens here at Fanshawe. Fanshawe Works is um, a brand that we love and we own and we uh, really cherish because that's what your final aim is, to come here, get an education, get the skills that the industry requires, but then to actually utilize those skills and work in the industry. That is what... Fanshawe wants, that is what our city wants, that is what our province and country wants as well. Our career services, Fanshawe's career services are what help you through this process from, this, uh, from inside the college, but they also depend on services that are offered by the city and other, uh, other, other areas within the city as well. Our career services help you with your job search assistance. Uh, they get you ready for employment, resume workshops. Resume in every country is different as you might uh, understand. Uh, in some countries, having your uh, a photo or a picture on your resume is an absolute must. It's different here in Canada. Uh, so it, it differs every country that you go to. How do you do that? These are just some practical things that our career services helps you get ready for. As a result of our career services and the amazing effort that they put in, Fanshawe College's graduate employment rate as published by Colleges Ontario, this is done every year, um, is 90.3%. That means 90.3% of our students get employment within six months of graduation. This is the highest within the province. Now, this is the highest, of course, because of our programs, because of our professors, because of our career services, but most of all, because of our students. Because as I said earlier, you get out of the program what you put into the program. So this is an effort of our students, how we provide opportunities for them to network, uh, to connect with companies, but students have to utilize those opportunities. And that is what our students do really, really well. Here is some more information about our career services, some employers that our career services works with. There are more than 8,000 employers that her career services works with. Of course, we offer a tremendous number of co-op programs as well, uh, which are earned while you learn uh, in the city of London or in Ontario or uh, outside in Canada as well. Now, the importance that we put on employment shows because even before you start your program, we have Sancho Works workshops. These workshops 
uh, help you by understanding what are employers thinking. Uh, what is an what are advice from our alumni for new students starting in Pancha? So even before you start your classes, you have these workshops that happen, which are focused on employment. This has led to better part-time employment as well within our student body. And this is something we are very proud of. One thing I'd like to mention is, of course, you would get a recording of this session uh, later. You will also get the PowerPoints. You see these red links uh, on the right side of my slides. These are links uh, and you can look at these videos later as well once you get the PowerPoint. These are our social media channels. Of course, you can see those social media channels on my um, uh, background as well. Uh, please join us in these social media channels just to stay connected with Fanshawe and whatever is happening here at Fanshawe. And we love hearing from our students. And of course, we do tons of very interesting and engaging content and contests as well, uh, which can give you chances to win prizes. Uh, so with that, uh, I will end my PowerPoint. Uh, I will uh, hand this over to uh, Robert Collins. But what I'm going to do first is play you a video about London. And I understand you might have uh, questions about um, uh, Fanshawe as well. But after the presentation is done, uh, the LEDC presentation is done, we're going to take general London questions and Fanshawe questions at the end as well. So before I do that, I'm going to play a um, short video for the city of London and you will get a better sense of what London has offered many people in the past. Oops.
Ah, thank you. So that gives you a little bit of a taste of London. Over the next few minutes, what I'd like to do is share some, what I think is some really interesting, useful data about our city. I would like to share some key fe features that make London a great place to live, work, play, and learn, and highlight some of the key sectors that are, uh, are creating opportunities, not only in the sectors that are, are really growing and thriving and making an, econ making an economic contribution, but are in fact creating opportunities in other sectors at the same time. Now, a little bit now about uh, the London Economic Development Corporation. We are a not-for-profit agency contracted by the City of London to bring new business to London, whether it be that be in from internationally or uh, from within Canada. And we're very pleased that I'm going to highlight some of the companies that have joined us from around the world creating opportunities. We have a very active marketing and communications um, division that is helping tell that story. And most importantly, because I, I am the director of workforce development and that's where I work, and I should mentioned by the way, full disclosure, I am a former international student and I am also a Fanshawe graduate and I stayed. And I was so pleased to see that Canada recognized last in, in 2018, 54,000 interna uh, international students became permanent residents in Canada, which just tells us how, how welcoming Canada is. But workforce development is one of the key features for whether a company is going to come to London or to stay in London. And when we mean workforce development, we mean the talent that's being produced from Fanshawe College. As was mentioned, those program advisory committees and connections to London companies are what make Fanshawe programs thrive, uh, make, helps them adjust to changing circumstances and helps them be incredibly relevant to local employers. So we'll talk about some of those connections and some of those opportunities in the next few minutes. So when you think about London, where, where are we and sort of what's, our, what's, what's happening? We are such a great, uh, in such a great location. And this is a little bit of a test for you. What I'd like you to do is uh, look at latitude 8125 after this webinar and look at cities around the world which are on this same latitude. You'll get a sense that in fact, we're further south than quite a few United States and we have some really key opportunities from our city. As you can see um, from the slide here, we have 150 million people uh, of all backgrounds within a one day drive. What does that mean? That means we've got a great uh, supply chain to a whole range of consumers and industries uh, in the United States, et cetera. And let me show you the next map, which will show you where we're positioned. So you can see that within that, that uh, driving distance, look, we've got New York within one day, uh, Detroit, Chicago, Boston, and if you look, we're very close to Boston in terms of, uh, of, our, of our latitude. Uh, so this, this gives us a great strategic advantage with our highways, our airport, uh, our international airport, et cetera. So moving on, uh, let me show you uh, that London, uh, London has one of the most balanced economies, which means in this COVID world, let me share with you What's, uh, what the situation is. Our unemployment rate has been uh, 5.9 uh, for last year. It has gone up to 8.9 uh, as of last month because of the impact of COVID-19. However, within what's been happening in COVID-19 is that we have a lot of companies which actually have been hiring extra people to respond. And I'll be talking about those as we go through our different sectors but we are more resilient than many communities. In fact, the unemployment rate for last month for the province of Ontario was 13%. So that gives you a little bit of a sense of that, of that resilience based on us having not a single major dominant sector between all of the different uh, varieties. As you saw where we're located, 
in southwestern Ontario, we are the regional center. So we have government offices, uh, major banking facilities, etc., that are supporting the region from so so from Windsor to Hamilton and, and up to the Grey Bruce area. We are that regional capital where people come for a variety of different services. Moving on, you can see that uh, what I'd like to share with you is about some of the key features, our affordable housing. As an example, a two bedroom apartment in London, uh, the average cost is about 1,543 Canadian dollars. And a reminder, by the way, that the Canadian dollar at the moment is uh, 71 cents uh, of, of the US dollar. So in fact, for those of you internationally, we're a very good, um, uh, we're at a very good pri uh, price point. To let you know about our diversity, our, our uh, city is 22% of us have come from somewhere else. And that's been a growing percentage of the population and critically important. We have people from ar around the world uh, living and thriving in London and with a whole variety of welcoming services to make that happen. Within our arts and culture, we have museums, art galleries, uh, um, music venues, the Budweiser Gardens, which is a major site, uh, brings incredible music talent. In fact, London was the only city to host Pearl Jam. Our lower childcare costs, it's about $1,100 for, for childcare for the month. And then when you think about our connectivity, as I mentioned, we have the 400 series of highways connecting to six border crossings within an hour and a half drive of London into the United States. Our international airport, which boasts a, 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 a special cargo area where, where people can bring products and services in and hold them in, in that cargo area without having to pay taxes until they're released. We have rail, which is incredibly important for moving uh, uh, automobiles and other products and services uh, to, as part of London's key role in the supply chain for those industries. And we have bus connections. Now let's look at playing in London. Playing in London, we have over 4 million trees. We have great, actually, the slide that you, the, the video you saw was uh, from a few years ago where it said we have 100 kilometers of walking trails. It's now up to 330. So very, very uh, extensive uh, trails, parks, uh, indoor swimming pools. I should add, by the way, that um, one of our residents recently uh, won the 100 meter uh, World uh, Butterfly Champions. Uh, her name, Maggie McNeil, we're very proud of her. Music. Music in Fanshawe College, by the way, is a key driver and supporter of our music industry. We have over 55 venues for music of all forms. When you look at that feature of our Go Teams Go, not only does Fanshawe have, have great, the Fanshawe Falcons are great sporting opportunities. Here in London, we've got three semi-professional teams, uh, whether it be the London Knights in ice hockey, the London Lightning in, in basketball, which is a good standard, and the London Majors. Uh, uh, baseball. The London Majors, by the way, operate in Labatt Park, the oldest continuously used professional baseball park in the world. Now that's amazing, isn't it? For those of you from Korea uh, who, who are lucky, lucky enough playing, uh, being able to see baseball at the moment, uh, we are certainly missing it right now in our COVID world. And we'll chat a little bit more about the COVID response when we're chatting about our industries. When you think about shopping in London, we've got four major shopping malls. But in addition to that, we've got a very vibrant downtown and business improvement areas, both in Old East downtown and in other locations, which have quirky homegrown products and services that are, are, are interesting and stimulating. We, when we're fully operational, have nonstop events all summer. In fact, the second largest event in Canada, Sunfest, uh, uh, is held along with Home County Folk Festival, all sorts of other festivals in our parks downtown, which in non-COVID times, 
uh, we would be congregating in mass to enjoy food, music, arts and crafts, and the experience of joining with others. Now let me talk a little bit about our cost of living. As you can see, London's uh, average home prices is, is less than most of the other major centers in Canada and significantly less. Let me talk a little bit about, uh, about affordability in, in, in London and in Canada generally and about earnings. First of all, let's, to let you know that Ontario has one of the higher minimum wages. At the moment, it's $14 for those 18 and above and going to $14.25 this October. The, uh, to let you know that if I was looking for work in London, I would go to a couple of different sites to sort of really understand just how affordable we are. First of all, I would go to the Canada Job Bank, and that's where you can go to their wages function, and you can see the high, medium, and low wages for a whole range of different jobs and positions. But that's not all. Here's another little secret that I think is really important. It's not just how much you earn in your particular occupation in a community that makes the difference. It's how, how affordable is the community so you can enjoy the features of the community. So let me share another one uh, website, which is called salaryexpert.com. I find that incredibly powerful because what it allows you to do is look at if I was earning $60,000 a, as a human resources professional in London, how much would I need to earn in other similar communities to enjoy that same lifestyle in terms of the, the cost of housing, the average cost of food, and all those other essentials. So how much is left for you to be able to enjoy and do the things that you like to do. So I, I recommend those as sort of part of your homework about really, and then that'll confirm what a good choice London is for you. When we moving, moving on, I wanna share with you that uh, London, this is the, when you look at this whole area of the London, what we call the census metropolitan area of our over 15,000 companies, you will see that we have 100 that are 307, that are 100 or more employees of 376, which, which means that more than 90% of companies have less than 100 employees. That, by the way, is the same pattern across the country. What does that mean? It means some significant things. So for instance, when you see that 20 to 99 and that 100, so that approximately 2,400 employers, they're the ones that are likely uh, to post jobs on job boards. They're the ones who are most likely to have a human resources function. The others, the smaller business, it's likely to be an owner or manager of a company that's doing some of those functions as well. They may not have the best web page or careers page for you to find work. So one of the great things about Fanshawe College is its engagement with employers so that you will be meeting in your classes, employers will be presenting, and employers know about the value of your education. So you will be able, so that you will be able to make those connections through the various different job fairs and career fairs on campus uh, by some company visits through some of the programs, but, but you'll need to sp spend some special attention when you're thinking about your resume, when you're thinking about making those connections to look, look at some of those smaller and medium enterprises because they're growing and changing rapidly. The larger businesses, yes, provide um, uh, lots of, of, of progressive employment opportunities, but at the same time, a, the engine of the economy is really being driven by those small and medium size organizations. Moving on. I would like to talk now about our five major sectors that LEDC is busy attracting new companies to join us and to help existing companies grow. 
So when you think about our manufacturing sector, we have over, over 3,700 people employed. We have over 500 companies. Think about 3M, a major worldwide brand. The Canadian head office is here. So all of the brand coordination of their eight different plants in Canada, and there's one here in London, uh, happens from, from London. Diamond aircraft, manufacturing aircraft that train pilots. Uh, by the way, uh, you will find them in, in use around the world. It's rapidly expanding, making light uh, composite aircraft to train people. We have Starlim, a company we attracted from Austria, making silicon parts for both uh, the automotive industries, but also medical and other industries. Uh, we, we look at uh, JMP moving in, uh, a very advanced robotics. Sedicia, great company from, from originally from Portugal that's here, that's actually supplying Tesla from London. Rosa from Germany, very active supporting that whole uh, uh, automotive uh, industry, which, which sort of stems from just outside Toronto through to Michigan. We have a Trojan Technologies, and Trojan Technologies is develops uh, uh, ultraviolet light water purification systems. In fact, the water of New York City is purified using their systems. And they keep adapting, developing new products and services. So for instance, one of their interesting ones is, is for, if you think about those tankers moving around the world, so supply ships, which when they're, which take on water and then discharge water. Well, Trojan Technologies has developed a water purification system so that if they take on water that takes on different uh, fish and animal matter in one location, they don't, it's purified before they discharge that water in another area. So when you think about industry 4.0, you think about all of the different robotics and different uh, technologies which are being applied, they're, they're, they are very vibrant in, uh, in all of our manufacturing sector. The second area that I'd like to talk about is our digital creative space. This is one of our two fastest growing areas. Uh, we have over uh, 400 companies with 9,000 employees. Actually, it was only 7,000 employees a number of years ago doing very exciting things. Race Roster, which has recently been a, a, a homegrown London company, recently acquired by ASICS, the Japanese uh, uh, running shoe company. It runs and coordinates everything you wanted to do to, to, to organize a race, of a road race, a walk for charity, etc. cetera. Autodata, uh, a homegrown London company, uh, now part of a larger organization, Autodata, any one of the major US car producing companies, uh, whether it be Ford, Chrysler, GM, Fiat, Chrysler, they're using their systems to from, coordinate it from London, Ontario with offices uh, throughout the US and actually in the UK. Uh, they're coordinating dealer supplies do they, do the, do the, and also dealer advertising from London. Diebold, uh, 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 originally a, a, a London company, uh, they make the software inside bank machines. So uh, uh, about a third of all North American bank machines are using their software. And when you so, see uh, digital extremes, digital extremes is part of our uh, renowned gaming cluster, uh, which, in, which includes companies like Big Blue Bubble, um, and when you think about uh, uh, digital uh, extremes, they have over 80 million players of their great game, Warframe. And many of you may be familiar with that game. We have a fantastic convention every year where, uh, where players from around the world come to London, uh, uh, take over our convention center and learn all of the different features, give suggestions, Etc. It's just a tremendous uh, event when you see from our airport through to our, our downtown just how much the the players 
from around the world have adopted uh, that uh, uh, of the games they're producing. Media Sonar has an interesting technology that they that, that is being used uh, for crisis management. They can monitor uh, the the use of social media and predict. Uh, where there might be issues and they factor supporting uh, police forces um, and sheriff's departments in being able to track and support responses to, uh, to situations. And so for instance, they, they may be very useful for helping with contact tracing in this, uh, in this COVID world where things may be happening. Voices, another company uh, which has just, I think added 100,000 different voices so that if you're wanting to do uh, make a video, if you're wanting to uh, make a commercial, if you're wanting to make a, a film, what are the kind of voices that you need to in support of that? And so they have a, a, a voice bank, which then can be matched up with your interests. And it's incredibly uh, popular with, with companies in New York uh, and Los Angeles. Yet again, London companies with global reach. Moving on to our next sector, food processing. This area around London, we have 33,000 farms and we have 90 companies, 7,000 employees, which will soon be growing. And this is the other very large, uh, uh, very fast growing sectors in London. We have Dr. Otka, which makes pizza, frozen pizza. And, and you, for those of you on the call from Australia, next time you go to the grocery store and look for a, a frozen pizza, uh, please look to see where it's made. You might find, because they are delivering to Australia from London, Ontario, uh, frozen pizza, Dr. Otka. And by the way, that plant is scheduled to, to expand over the next 10 years and create even more opportunities for the 300 that are already working there. Maple Leaf Foods, currently under construction is their major poultry producing plant for Canada. It, uh, it will be uh, having 1,500 employees and state-of-the-art equipment. You will find that over, uh, we'll find that we already have Cargill here and anywhere you go in Canada and you have, and you go to McDonald's and have chicken McNuggets, those are being produced here in London. So when you look at these companies and all the ones I've mentioned before, there are roles in finance, there are roles in human resources, there are roles in quality assurance, there's roles in supply chain, supporting these organizations as they continue to grow and prosper. Moving on to the next sector. Health, as I mentioned earlier, strategically, we are in the, in the middle of Southwestern Ontario, but we have world-class health facilities. Canada's first heart transplant happened here in London at University Hospital. And one of the uh, anti-rejection drugs used around the world was discovered here actually by uh, a gentleman called Cal Stiller. Uh, and you can see that there's a center here named after him. We also coordinate research trials through KGK science, through uh, uh, robots, uh, clinical trials, and through Styrus that are happening around the world from London. And so there are development programs that where you can learn to, to be part of the clinical trials process from London. The, uh, there are lots of roles growing in, in our health uh, sector. And you will see that uh, you will see that, um, uh, for instance, Trudell Medical, which responded very rapidly to the COVID crisis, they make airway chambers that help get the drugs um, uh, for if you have COPD or asthma. They get the right volume of the drug in the right place in your system. They were able to adjust their technologies to make some ventilators, etc., to help in the COVID environment. And in response to that, they had, a, they had to add an extra shift to, uh, to be able to respond to that. Moving on. 
professional services. This is a large area in London, over 500 companies, um, 52,800 people work in there. You'll recognize some of those uh, international brands, whether it be Ernst & Young or Deloitte, H HSBC, um, et cetera. So very much we have all those full range of, of professional services. As well, um, within that, interesting companies. And for instance, if you were in the UK going to a, to a hardware store, you would be being supported, uh, likely the purchase, the item that you'd be purchasing would be made from a, a purchasing software that they're using be, being made by a company like LBMX. Uh, we have companies like Sykes. Sykes is coordinating uh, for the province of Ontario, uh, telehealth. So if, for instance, you, while you're here, uh, you're not feeling well and you want, and your doctor isn't quite available, but you want to, to get some advice about what to do next, you'd be phoning telehealth and then it would be coordinated here from London and on, Ontario to, uh, to, so to, uh, to develop that effective response, whether to get you to emergency, to call emergency for you, et cetera. So yet again, interesting uses of technology which have been very incredibly popular as people haven't wanted during this COVID time period to go through, go necessarily to emergency unless they need to, or to actually uh, go to a doctor's office unless they, they really, uh, uh, so being able to be advised about different alternatives has been incredibly important. Moving on. London uh, is also, and this is creating all sorts of jobs, is a, a center for research. So one of the ones I, I'd like to salute is obviously the center for the Canadian Center for Product Validation, which actually is a feature of Fanshawe College. This is where, for instance, if you were inventing a new device and you wanted to see how it responds at different temperature, or if it's dropped for multiple times, will it still function? Um, etc. They have all of the testing equipment and it's really an exciting opportunity for students to, to work on projects in conjunction with them to develop, um, uh, to test as a new products and services before they, before they move into production. Moving on. It's, it's wonderful to think about all of the things that are being actually made here in London. We have, we have beer, so a, a major product uh, around the world. London's McCormick, which, which, I, which you saw earlier, they make, uh, they, they access, produce and share. So it's just a supply chain opportunity, spices. They have test, catch, ca test kitchens. So they're helping to inform restaurants, food producers um, uh, and uh, major food manufacturers about the different changing tastes and changing opportunities from around the world. I've already mentioned the the uh, the airway chamber. We have Dr. Acker. I mentioned the whole range of pizzas, that worldwide gaming, lots of different things happening from London. Actually, just to mention one of the world the world discoveries from London was actually the use of insulin in in uh, in, in assisting with people with diabetes. That actually, that, that, I, that re original research happened here in London. Moving on. Here are some of the key resources that I'd like to share with you that LEC, LEDC provides in support of Fanshawe College's efforts. We produce, mentioning that growing sector of London tech jobs. Right now, when I look at the list in front of me, when I look at the 70 companies, over 200 job titles that are currently open. And by the way, when you see a job board and you see a job title, it doesn't necessarily mean there is just one job. There may be many jobs. We have a similar job board for London manufacturing jobs. For many of you who are coming from around the world, you may want to use our London concierge. This is where you can find lots of different things about London. You can find where are those places to, to rent housing? Where are those places 
where, what are the religious opportunities, depending on what your background is? Uh, where's the, the closest temple? Where's the closest mosque? And by the way, London, um, to talk about London and being a welcoming community, London had the first mosque in Eastern Canada. We now have three. We also have a business directory that, that is really helpful because this gives you an opportunity to uh, go in and see in each of the different sectors, what are the companies, what do they say about themselves, and what's the link to their web pages. This is all some of the kind of homework that I'm sure you'll want to do as part of your journey to Choose London. Speaking of Choose London, Choose London is the name of the City of London's approved immigration strategy. That strategy is saying London needs to add uh, people because of our aging population. It has set targets to attract people from around the world to settle here. And it has supports to help people be welcomed and to be encouraged and supported as they move into the workplace upon graduation. So we work hand in glove with Fanshawe College to not only support you in your international student experience, but also when you transition from that student experience into the full-time world of work in Canada's London. So I look forward to seeing you here on our campus and in our community, and I look forward to your questions, which Sarah will uh, moderate in a couple of moments. Thank you. Oh, actually, here's one last slide. Here we have a magazine, a free magazine, which you can order through ledc.com. And I'll make sure that the Rave card, Accelerate Your Career in Canada's London, uh, uh, is made available electronically so uh, that it can also be shared with you as a follow up um, to this webinar. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Robert. That was amazing information for our students. And I'm sure the hundreds of students that are online uh, appreciate all the information and the in-depth knowledge that, Robert, you have. Robert has been a big support for Fanshawe College, but also hundreds and thousands of our students over the uh, last few years. As Robert said, he himself was an international student. I will not ask the year, Robert. Uh, just <laughs> um, respect, but um, thank you so much. That was amazing information. Uh, we will move on to questions uh, now. Before I do that, I have a, a quick thing that I wanted to show everyone uh, today. Uh, this is a link, so uh, just give me a second. I will share um, the link with all of you. Um, this is a link um, that I'll share for our Zoom hub. So um, it'll give you a sense of all future uh, events uh, that uh, Fanshawe International will be holding. Uh, so the, the link is very simple, fanshawecollege.zoom.us. Um, this is just a hub where you can watch all the recorded sessions that we've done over the last few weeks. Uh, this session also will be available there later, but also you can register for future uh, sessions. So this would be a good resource for students looking at uh, division specific program specific information, as well as general information like provided uh, today. Uh, so with that, what I'll do is I'll open up uh, to questions in uh, the chat box. So if you have questions, you can put in the chat box uh, and I will pick up a few of the questions as well. But Robert, I already have questions ready for you because we asked our registrants to enter their questions when they registered. Uh, and there were uh, almost thousand questions that came in, but I've selected a few questions that I'd really uh, like to ask you today. Okay, so this, this, this webinar is gonna last another week then? <laughs> Uh, well, if uh, I read out all the questions, I absolutely <laughs> would, uh, but I've selected a few themes of the questions uh, that uh, I've been getting. Yeah. The first question, uh, Robert, is around um, COVID-19's influence on the economy. You did talk about the un unemployment rate and how London compares to Ontario, but uh, London's um, 
diversity in terms of the industry. How do you think that will uh, cope up with the impact that it's having right now, but also sometime in the future? I think it, I think we're uh, I think it's going to be a, cha- a challenge for all of us to continue to adjust because right now we're starting to open uh, this weekend. Golf courses are being able to be open, uh, tennis courts, uh, uh, companies. Uh, Companies which have uh, an entrance, uh, uh, like in terms of retail operations and so on, uh, are able to open. Our restaurants can't. So our hospitality industry has is going to be slower, I think, to open and recover. Uh, so I think things are going to move at different paces within different segments of the community. Um, I, uh, also, people, you know, have learned to shop online. You know. And many of our companies also have adjusted to adding e-commerce features where they didn't have them before. So that's created opportunities in our technology area to support companies. So it's going to be a little bit of, of I think, I think it's going to be an 18 month journey uh, because the, they're predicting another wave. Um, so that area of social distancing uh, people, uh, in, for instance, in, in offices, uh, do people move into some um, more remote workers or some people coming in for some of the time, uh, et cetera? So quite a, I think we're still early days in the transition. I'm optimistic, though, that with the, with the diversity of our economy and also the resilience, because remember, we did go through the 2008 situation. Canadian banks were the, uh, were, the, were the most successful in terms of their recovery mode in that environment. They needed the least government assistance. Canada also is investing in credit, uh, in all sorts of uh, very significant investments in, in helping people through this transition. Uh, uh, hopefully, the tap will stay open to allow for infrastructure, construction, et cetera, to continue uh, because we still need to create those opportunities or else we'll lag behind in, in, uh, when, when you think about international competition in terms of us being able to get things to market and to produce goods and services. Thank you, Robert. Um, you're right. Uh, we're all trying to navigate the new reality. Um, and I think, um, uh, like in my opinion, initially there was shock and um, everyone was hoping, okay, a month, two months, three months, this yes. will be done. But now I think there is a move towards understanding, okay, this is a reality. Uh, it might be six months, it might be 18 months, it might be more. But I think now we are moving towards acceptance and coming up with ways how we thrive even within this environment. Uh, so, uh, and we're confident that London would be able to do a lot to help through the situation as well. When I, think, um, when I look just to quickly, you know, when, when we look at what the experience is, we've had about 460 cases, about 360 of those have recovered. We have unfortunately had 46 deaths. Uh, and most of those though were in the elderly population and in sort of about 26 of those were in long-term care or, uh, or homes for the age facilities. So as, as a community, uh, given the, the severity, in, uh, unfortunately in comparison to others, I think we've been pretty proactive in term, and, and, and our citizens have been good in supporting the measures in place. Absolutely. I see a lot of questions coming in around Fanshawe's response for the fall intake. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I should address that. Um, there hasn't been a formal announcement, uh, um, but Fanshawe is working on a plan for fall 2020. Uh, as uh, I think all of us expect, there would be some changes for sure, the way the program would be delivered, uh, what would be offered and things like that. But all I can assure you is as soon as there is a decision made, it will be communicated to all our future applicants and our education partners around the world. Fanshawe will support you through this journey. As I said earlier, I think through the May 2020 as well, we've tried to support students as much as possible without meeting face-to-face. Of course, going forward, it might look different. There might be hybrid, there might be online. Uh, That's all speculation, but 
Tan Cha is working on a very robust plan. That's, I, that's something I can assure you. And as soon as we have more details, we will share it with you, our future students, because we want to support you through this, uh, this journey to not just Fanshawe College, but to a new country, to a new life. Um, Robert, now there are many questions coming in, which are industry specific, but there are a couple of other really good questions, which are general as well, that I, I would like you to address. Um, and a big question is about London for families. Uh -huh. London as a city to, to uh, have a family, to raise a family. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, uh, think about what are those key elements. Uh, as I mentioned, affordability is one thing. Uh, we have a very low commute time. So think about that as an asset. If you were in, say, the Metro Toronto area, you would likely be commuting for 45 to minutes to an hour. Whereas in London, our average commute time is about 22 minutes to get to work. So that allows there to be more time for family time. That's one. Secondly, the quality of our, of our, of our primary and secondary education. We have great schools that are achieving good standards for individuals to succeed in our, in our what's free public education. In other words, it's paid for through your taxes. So we have good neighborhood schools. When you think about the opportunities for growing your family in terms of playgrounds and, and, and sports, soccer, being healthy, when um, we have lots of opportunities there. As I mentioned uh, as well, in terms of our food quality, having high food standards, having those farms that are all around us, that rich farmland, all of that is sort of providing for a, a healthy family environment. Then if you think about being able to join with family and friends, we have, as I mentioned earlier, a full range of opportunities to socialize, whether they be service clubs, whether they be religious organizations that you want to be part of. And by the way, that's a key uh, aspect of Canada. We respect everybody's traditions. We're not trying to force anybody into a specific tradition as long as they're respecting everybody else's. So I think there's lots of, of, of key advantages for a family um, to grow. Um, we also, through our immigration policies, uh, there is a, a family reunification um, category as well, which means that if you're moving here and you have the ability to be able to support immediate family members, they can also apply to come here as well. So you can not only bring your family with you, but you can also grow your family here as well. Fantastic. I will add my personal experience to that. Uh, and I would say I came to Canada as an immigrant uh, and I chose London because of all the things that Robert just mentioned. I was sick of driving two hours for my work and things like that. But there are many, many other things. And I think the overall friendliness of the city and the connectedness of the city is, is huge. You feel like a part of the community. The first week you'll be here, you'd feel welcome. And I think that is such a big part of uh, London as a welcoming city as well. But I would make one extra point, though. I do think it's important for international students to not only sit by somebody from your own that you know that no, is to make sure you deliberately go and sit or, or join with and meet other people from other, mm -hmm. both Canadians, but also other, other international students, not just from your, from your own home country. That's the, that's the richness of the opportunity, which sometimes we don't take. Absolutely. That is super important for students to, to do that. Uh, that's how you learn. That's how you um, yeah. uh, make, make friends for life, yeah. as well as learn from them, build a network and things like that. Um, Rob, the next question, uh, and you didn't mention, you did talk about it actually, which I thought was a brilliant point mm -hmm. about uh, big multinational companies versus medium and small businesses. Yes. Uh, you did make that point, so I apologize for the re repeating this, but if you could reiterate that point briefly around the importance of mid and small businesses versus the, the big companies uh, that are there in our city or our province or our country. Right. 
Well, first of, first of all, uh, the, the big companies do often have very good opportunities. Uh, look at uh, a bank here, TD. It has 3,200 or so employees in London. They, they welcome people. Often you can get a part-time job as a student uh, at, at, their, at, their call, at their contact center and then move after about 12 months of being successful, you can move into other career related positions. I don't want to say that those are not good opportunities, but at the same time, uh, here, a cultural difference is that uh, I would suggest you have to be a manager of your own career rather than expecting an organization to manage your career for you. So, um, large organizations then will be making changes because they need to for business reasons. And often sometimes that means that at a certain age or stage, uh, you only, only a few people move forward. The smaller companies, um, I think create uh, the, 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 some skills involved in being able to be multitask because often in small companies, you know, here we're in a small organization I have to make the coffee, you know, I have to fill the paper in the photocopier, um, et cetera. As part of our roles, we have to do things which perhaps in, the, in, in some countries, that's somebody else's job to do. Smaller companies expect that resilience. We also, ex I, I, we can see that smaller companies are going to overall create more opportunities over time. Many people who come from overseas to Canada are also I think of immigration as an entrepreneurial act. I, you're taking a risk. You're being able to move from what you know to, to what's here. So Canada often, if you work in a small company and you're thinking you're, you're entrepreneurial, there's an opportunity then for you to see how that small company operates before you start your own. And by the way, I should remember that, at, um, or should remind people that that actually within Fanshawe College, they have a whole system of supporting entrepreneurial development through Leap Junction and other, other services which are being developed at the moment. Thank you, Robert. Um, th there are many questions, of course, coming in about specific industry as well. Um, and um, uh, IT, I see a lot of students asking me about questions about the IT industry. You did speak about these amazing companies that are there in the digital creative sector. Uh, but again, I think because of the requests coming in, I'm asking you to kind of repeat uh, the strengths of the IT industry here in sure. London, Ontario. Sure, the 350 companies, the 9,000 jobs, which I think will be 11,000 you know, within, within another couple of years. Yes, so in each of those areas, whether it be in gaming technology, whether it be in cybersecurity, whether it be in um, uh, you know, using all sorts of different backend, um, uh, full stack services, they're, uh, they're all welcome. Now I have one tip for, for people who are coming with, often uh, people are coming with some experience in their own, from their own country. And one of the things that I think they, it would be well worth their while documenting is what are the platforms they've been working on in their home country? And what are the, who are the customers that they've been servicing? Because often what I have found is international students do not explain enough in their resume that in fact they've been using world-class software, that they've also been often working with North American companies uh, or within North American systems. So that bridges that, do, that gap between that old, old uh, do you have Canadian experience? No, actually I have world-class experience working in North American uh, software um, or even, and this is where we're, we're um, often back with, often source countries have actually software that's more advanced than some of the stuff that's being used here. It's the ability to be able to explain that and to share that both in a very good resume, but also to be able to illustrate that. So I, I, I just wanna remind international students about thinking about what they're actually bringing here with them. That, that skill, that insight, that, uh, that experience. 
uh, that is amazing advice, Robert, because um, communicating uh, yourself, your pitch, what is your pitch, right? Yeah. You have to talk about yourself to an employer through your resume, which is generally the cover letter and the resume is the first point of contact with an employer. And you're right, you have to explain what you've been working on. And um, that's, that's amazing advice for our students. Um, we also have questions around uh, supply chain industry. So a lot of students come to Fanshawe to do their supply chain, logistics, operations management, purchasing uh, programs. Can you talk about um, the industry here in Southwestern Ontario and Ontario and also our location and how that uh, benefits on that? Sure, very pleased to. As I mentioned, when you think about a, a food processing, even that health manufacturing side, our, 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 our manufacturing sector, all of them, uh, and, and actually including our, supply, uh, our, our services, all have supply chain implications. So uh, all of our, and by the way, purchasing and supply chain is, is also within our institutional sectors, as well as our, um, so, so for instance, supply chain, um, uh, so, so we have supply chain opportunities uh, throughout. We have companies here, by the way, um, if you think about our trucking industry that needs to, which is supporting getting goods and services, as I mentioned, that 150 million consumers within an eight hour drive. Why is that important? Well, we have a major trucking logistics industry, which is moving those products and services into London to be uh, in terms of that food processing, and then out of London to those markets. So there's a significant, uh, as I mentioned, uh, as an example, McCormick's. McCormick's is sourcing spices and materials from around the world that arrive in London, which are then repackaged, reformulated, and then have to be redistributed. Every single part of that is a, is a su supply chain opportunities. We also have brokerage companies. So companies that are helping uh, navigate um, moving that goods and services. Um, uh, how? Uh, what's the? What's the? Um, what are the legal requirements in terms of the declarations that need to happen to make uh, to be able to shift that product from London through a border, and whether it be in a border by air, or a border by rail, or a, bo a, bo a border uh, by by truck. So lots permeating multiple industries. Now, the thing about supply chain jobs, they're not necessarily called supply chain. Mm -hmm. They might be warehouse coordinator. Uh, they, might be, um, they might be product planning. So you have to look, um, uh, you have to look at the actual job description to look at the skill set. And then you say, oh, that means it's a supply chain job. So that's a little bit also of, of something that, 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 that people learn from looking at job descriptions, going on to London manufacturing jobs, et cetera. Yes, um, that's, that's super important to look yeah. at the content of the job description. Uh, yes. That is taken very, very seriously here in, uh, in Canada. Um, the, the, so, uh, Robert, I know students, of course, come to Fanshawe to study and we, of course, provide them the training. But as a part of our uh, education, we also give them a lot of pathways into industry certifications. Yes. Now, that is valid for many, many industries. Uh, can you talk about maybe the value of these industry certifications uh, and how do industries recognize these and value these? Well, very much so. The, the, um, it's critically important that as much as possible, any of the programs do dovetail to those industry certifications. For instance, I just saw a question coming up about aviation. Uh, well, let, I'm very pleased to see that the aviation program at Fanshawe is um, definitely corresponds to the hours, to the tasks, et cetera, for various different aviation qualifications, which means that the that that industry knows that Fanshawe students can can um, can are able to, and and are qualified 
to hit the deck, hit the floor running in terms of those, uh, those roles. So industries are very much looking, it, it's a measure of, of helping not only the good work that Fanshawe does through his program advisory committees, et cetera, but by having those specific qualifications then really helps it easier for companies to uh, be able to uh, onboard Fanshawe talent. Thank you, Robert. There are a lot of questions coming in about the construction industry um, here in the city and in, of course in the province and country as well. So um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the construction industry uh, okay. as well. I'd be pleased to do that. So for instance, I mentioned the maple leaf plant that's being built, state of the art, um, uh, magnificent facility. That's a huge construction project. We have, in, in London, we have residential build, builders, we have institutional builders and commercial operations. Let me share one company from London, Ellis Don Construction. Ellis Don, uh, if you were to go to England and go to Canary Wharf, most of that was built by Ellis Don. So here we have a major world-class construction company uh, operating from London. We have other smaller ones, which are uh, uh, are in different niches, whether it be helping to build healthcare facilities or food processing f facilities. When I, with each one of those industry sectors, food processing, uh, manufacturing, health, all are going through transitions, aging physical plant, uh, needing, to, um, needing to rebuild those facilities. By the way, one interesting company from London which is, a, which, is, which is a sort of a crossover between them. Uh, well, which is two or three. We have one that specializes in using gaming technology for construction so that you actually uh, can visualize changing the color, the formation of a room, and it's pricing the product uh, and the quality at the same time. So you're actually then building and designing within real time with one London company. Uh, another company, Public Sector Digest, is doing, is doing all of the asset management of municipalities, mainly across Canada, but moving into five states. So if you want to know how old a bridge is, is it in need, of, has, when was it last tested? Where does it need to be replaced? Or a road, or an arena, or any of those infrastructure projects within a municipality, from London, Ontario, using construction methodology to be able to assess that material, uh, assess that um, lifespan of those facilities. We're, we're informing communities across the country and more and more in the US using that, that material. So we've got a lot going on in the and in the construction material space as well. This is a, a bit off, off. London is the only city with three different kinds of wind tunnels to test major facilities. So we have a straight wind tunnel, we have an avian wind tunnel, we have something called Three Little Pigs in conjunction with Fanshawe College that, that, that tests the tensile strength of the materials used. And we also have something called the Windy Dome next door to the, uh, the Canada Center for Product Validation that can test a hurricane, a building model in hurricane or typhoon, only place in the world you can do that. So uh, yet again, our uh, sense of, 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 of the connecting to the construction industry is strong. Robert, I must say that I'm having comments come in around students' amazement at your knowledge and the breadth and the depth of your knowledge about the industry in London. So we are we consider ourselves really lucky uh, to have you online here with us this morning answering students' questions. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Okay, so um, another industry that students are talking about, and before I say that, I, I'll say again, the, the page that I showed students earlier, fanshawecollege.zoom.us, um, that page has recorded sessions that we've done for international students in the last three weeks. So automotive section, uh, automotive industry, uh, IT industry, 
There are multiple industries that we've already done sessions on. So there are recordings where the associate deans are talking specifically about the industries, the companies, and the skill sets that we're training students for. So I think that'll be really helpful if you need information around that. We have an aviation uh, session coming in next week as well. So if you were interested in that, um, because I see questions about aviation as well coming in. Uh, so we'd look at that. But one industry, um, uh, Robert, that there are many questions coming in as well are around um, um, the, the, the animation, the graphics, the video production yes. as well. Uh, so if you can shed some light on that. Great, very, very pleased to. Uh, actually, what's great, uh, one of the benefits of COVID, and there are very few of them, <laughs> has been the need for companies to better tell their story. For to be able to better tell their products and services. So there has been a much greater demand for video uh, by enterprises to tell their story. That's one. Uh, secondly, when we move into the, as I mentioned earlier, that great strength of video game technology, there's all sorts of, of roles open in, in our video game industry. So if you were to go on London Tech Jobs, and to go on to look at digital extremes, big blue bubble, um, and I'm forgetting one of oh, uh, Tiny Titans, uh, big Viking games. Each one of those has slightly different technologies, different marketplaces and different products, all of which I think would be of interest um, to an international student thinking about working here and, and what are the tools and techniques being used in the animation space. When you think about website design as well, that, that's changed a lot. A lot is now stock, or in other words, the, the back end and so on is, 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 is being addressed. It's now actually how do you make those visually exciting, really connecting to the audience, et cetera. So, um, yeah, and, some and someday I'll learn some of those techniques and be able to apply them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, what COVID has done is it's um, forced everyone to do things that they were maybe not as comfortable with earlier and learn new things um, and do new things um, as well. Some are learning technology, some are learning other things as well. Um, but it's changed the way we approach um, our life for sure. In the, future, uh, I'm trying in the future, I'll be able to come back as an avatar. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to that that would be fun for sure um, we do have a lot of questions coming in about the aerospace aviation industry as well and you did talk about diamond and that industry and the composite material focus that diamond has uh, i would just say that diamond is fanshawe college's partner for yes. our commercial flight and aviation leadership program uh, which has a, a, a flight leadership component that Fanshawe is doing and a pilot training component that uh, Diamond Aircraft is doing. Uh, one of very few public private kind of partnerships for aviation industry that we have here. But uh, in general, Robert, if you wanted to talk about the aviation, the aerospace manufacturing industry in London, but also uh, maybe in Ontario and uh, the country. Sure. First, first of all, uh, just to say that we've checked in with Diamond and their order book is strong. In other words, they know that um, that even though right now we have a, obviously a lot of planes around the world are grounded, we do know that with the aging of pilots, with the need still to be able to move, if it's not people, we're still moving goods and services around the world. We know that there are going to be a, the, the, the need three to five years from now for more, for more pilots and for pl planes to be well-maintained. So Diamond Aircraft is, is still anticipating to be providing those training planes to allow people to learn how to fly over the next little while. Next, along with that, um, we have all sorts of smaller plants actually at the airport. And the airport, by the way, is one of London's sort of great opportunities. In other words, we all, uh, without going too far, we obviously, because of its, the length of its runway, it can, by the way, uh, take some of the, the world's largest planes have landed there, which lot, not a lot of airports can. It also has various different function, uh, companies which are refurbishing planes. 
In other words, and those are rather interesting for people. In other words, not, not as opposed to just following uh, a, a, a company maintenance schedule, suddenly you're getting a different plane every day or every month that you're working on to take it apart to make sure all of its systems are working. So you'll see more growth. And there's a company there called MI6 or M16. Um, better not confuse it with the espionage agency, um, which, which, is, uh, which is restoring planes. And there are some other areas at the airport, a couple of which I can't talk about because they're confidential. So we're expecting more of that. There's also more happening at local airports and Canada as a whole has had a strong history in the, in the aviation industry. Fantastic. So we're going to take now a final few questions. Um, and I have a lot of requests coming in to talk about the finance and the insurance industry specifically, yeah. which yes. is such a big industry here in our city and our uh, region. Yes. Robert. Very, very pleased to do that. You, you will now see a brand called Canada Life as an example. That is what was formerly London Life, a national company of great strength. Um, with, with uh, key functions here in London. London wa was, was considered for many decades the home of insurance in Canada. So we have a lot of, of insurance roles. We have a lot of finance. When I mentioned not only those obviously accounting companies and uh, we have a lot of the, the, the major worldwide brands that people would know, whether it be uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers or Ernst & Young or Deloitte et cetera, are all here. But in addition to that, there are fine, every single one of those companies that we've talked about today has somebody doing a finance, an accounting or a finance role. They're critically embedded within those industries. And the same, by the way, is true for human resources. The same is true for supply chain. And depending on the size, the same is true for marketing and communications. We have marketing and communications embedded within companies, but we also have standalone marketing and communications agencies as well. And by the way, all of those functions apply not just to the private sector, they apply to government. So the municipalities, they apply to hospitals, they apply to areas and you know, charities. All of those have finance roles, marketing roles, um, etc. So, yeah, fantastic. That's great. Um, I think I will ask you to cover one last industry, um, uh, and you did cover actually in a lot of depth. It was the healthcare industry, yes. and it has a newfound importance, of course. But for our city yes. and our country, it's been always very, very important. So, yes. if you can talk about, you actually did a lot of in-depth information about that. Uh, but if you can briefly cover like the healthcare and the breadth of the healthcare industry here in the city. Sure. Okay. First, first of all, as I mentioned, London has major teaching hospitals here in London, both London Health Sciences and St. Joseph's Hospital. Uh, we then have obviously a range of from homes for the aged um, to, to uh, nursing homes, etc. We also, as I mentioned, we have a whole area of medical industry making everything from hospital beds to dynamic uh, medical wristbands to, to airway chambers, a whole range of different, um, uh, but, but let me just say that we ran a job, a virtual job fair last week. What did we have? We had five employers there looking for over a hundred uh, 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 public uh, PSWs, RNs, technologists, etc. So, um, so we also know that our, our uh, and uh, a slide that I, I didn't cover is our demographics. London is, London and Canada is an aging society. We uh, have, we predict major uh, shortages in the next little while. And that includes, um, yes, this one here, thank you very much. Uh, either I missed it or whatever. Anyway, the, uh, this, this shows that change of the aging society working through. Healthcare is one of those, so one of those industries most affected. 
So there's going to be even greater hiring and training within both the front with everything from uh, respirologists to, tech, to, to technicians, to, uh, to x-ray. By the way, London, by the way, is a, a home of, of, of imaging. Uh, we've developed some different technologies in imaging, which are used now worldwide. Um, but, but, but you can see from this chart, people are aging rapidly. And so that is creating uh, employment opportunities as well as the need to service those people who are aging. So uh, health healthcare is uh, health health careers in healthcare uh, are going to be in demand for a long time. Awesome, uh, thank you, Robert, for that. Um, so uh, I have a lot of questions coming in, but. Unfortunately, we can't really talk about every possible job, uh, but I will ask you one question, students. Um, yep. Use the chat box and tell us what specific areas, open houses you'd like us to consider. We've done many. We've done business management, business and information architecture, healthcare administration management, automotive, IT, public relations, corporate communications. We've done many in the last three weeks, but yep. if students have any advice, any specific requests around uh, what kind of um, uh, college programs, college divisions they'd like to hear from us yes. about. And also any other areas like college services and things like that, that they'd like to hear about. We welcome your feedback and we will uh, absolutely try to schedule that over the next few weeks. As I said, fanshawcollege.zoom.us is our link for um, uh, any future sessions that are scheduled. So please put in your comments in the chat box around future sessions that you would like. As I said, for September 2020, um, as soon as we have an update, we will share that with students. We will try to have an online session as well, answering any questions uh, that you might have. Um, and with that, there are, uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, advice coming in, but Robert, I'd let you have the final words for today. I'd like to thank you a lot for uh, for the, to the students who are joining us, but also Robert for taking so much time explaining all these things to our future Fanshawe uh, students and hopefully Canadians. Uh, but I'd let you have the final word uh, of advice or anything for us. Thank you. Uh, I'm very pleased to have, have joined Fanshawe. Fanshawe is one of the great assets that we have in our community and it's so important to our employers to be able to, to access the great talent that Fanshawe has and the great relationship. In fact, we're hosting a, a session with the School of Information Technology with a bunch of employers near the, near the end of the month just to, to, to fine tune their needs against the programming. So that's the kind of dynamic relationship we have and we're so pleased to have it. For, for those international students thinking about coming to London, first of all, welcome. We look forward to seeing you here. We think there's some great opportunities. There are some things that I would suggest you do before you, you come here. One is, as I, as I mentioned, start to use some of the websites to actually explore London a little bit. Start working on thinking about sort of your resume a little bit. Perhaps make sure that you've got at least two original copies of your transcripts, et cetera, from other areas. Try to make sure that you have a driver's license, check, check to see if it's valid here, and then to try to make sure you, it's as, it's as, um, it's as uh, it's extended for the longest time period. So you don't have to renew from here. It's more awkward to do it from here. So all of those kind of little life things, um, you know, are, are really important. And I'm saying that because we want you to stay. So I want you to make it as easy as possible for you to have done all of that kind of homework. So you feel comfortable about the choice you've made, perhaps sharing why you're thinking about London with your other family members so they understand your choice process. And by the way, maybe they'll then follow you too. So please uh, look forward to seeing you in London. And remember, in the words of our, um, uh, of, our, of our strategic plan for immigration, choose London. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, all our audiences, uh, for joining us uh, this morning. Thank you. We look forward to welcoming you here in Fanshawe and in London. Thank you. Have a great day.